హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు టుడే సెషన్ ఆన్ సపరేషన్ టెక్నిక్స్ త్రీ టుడే వీ విల్ బీ డిస్కసింగ్ మోర్ అబౌట్ ఎలక్ట్రోఫోరసిస్ అండ్ హౌ టు సపరేట్ ప్రోటీన్స్ బై యూజింగ్ ఎలక్ట్రోఫోరసిస్ ఓకే ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఇన్ ద ప్రీవియస్ సెషన్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ అబౌట్ క్రమటోగ్రఫీ అండ్ ఎలక్ట్రోఫోరసిస్ అండ్ ఇన్ దిస్ సెషన్ వీ విల్ బీ డిస్కసింగ్ ఇన్ డీటెయిల్ అబౌట్ ద వేరియస్ టెక్నిక్స్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు యూస్ హౌ up to perform electrophoresis in this session we will be covering about principles types applications of electrophoresis friends as you know uh, in the last session we have discussed about the centrifugation and chromatography which are mainly based on for the purpose, for the purpose of separation of the biomolecules here in this technique of electrophoresis we are going to use the electric charge present on the biomolecules by using this charge we are going to separate the biomolecules here we know that various biomolecules possess charge at different ph and the molecules with charge can be separated by using electrophoresis if you look into the history of this electrophoresis in the year 1861 quincy is the first scientist who measured the electrophoretic phenomena later the swedish scientist tisslius he popularized the technique and received nobel prize in the year 1948 for the separation of serum proteins so in this session we will be discussing about the principle of electrophoresis and the different types of electrophoresis and along with this we will be discussing more about the paper electrophoresis and as well as the sds space electrophoresis let us see how these techniques work coming to the basic background of this technique the term electrophoresis denotes migration of charged particles so as we just said these biomolecules are having charge and charged molecules can be separated in this technique and coming to the basic principle the basic principle of electrophoresis is mainly based on the separation of charged particles in the presence of an applied electric field here you can see electrophoretic system a hypothetical electrophoretic system where in this system you can see there are two electrodes one is cathode the other one is anode and in the middle of this system we can uh, find some molecules atoms and ions with different charges so when you supply the power through this system what happens the positive ions move towards cathode and negative ions move towards anode so this is the basic principle which is working behind the electrophoresis so like this we are going to separate in the middle there is a mixture and that can be separated based on the charge okay and here we may think about how to separate the molecules which are without charge for that purpose there is a process which is called derivatization that means giving the charge to the uncharged molecules for example like carbohydrates can be derivatized that means they can be given charge through the process that is called derivatization for this purpose of derivatization we are going to use either borates or phosphates which will give charge to the non uncharged carbohydrates yeah so moving further we will be discussing about types of electrophoresis in these types there are majorly three types one is paper electrophoresis the other one is gel electrophoresis then in gel electrophoresis we will have two variants one is called native gel electrophoresis another one is sds space gel electrophoresis okay so irrespective of any type of electrophoresis the common thing is there is a buffer system which is essential to maintain the ionization state since we are talking about the charged molecules and to separate them so to give charge to these molecules the buffer is a crucial thing and along with this we should know that the electrophoresis can be performed in two types one is a vertical electrophoresis and the other one is horizontal electrophoresis and uh, before proceeding further let us have few factors regarding the electrophoresis key factors which are influencing electrophoresis are like this one is charge the other one is size and the other one is shape will affect the electrophoretic mobility of a molecule for suppose if you are performing electrophoresis so you should take care of the charge size and shape of the molecule because these are the three major factors which will influence the electrophoretic mobility okay 
So now friends, in this slide, you can see uh, there are different supporting matrices which we are going to use to perform electrophoresis. So for example, this electrophoresis matrix is nothing but a supporting material which is porous in its nature and which is having different pore sizes. The majorly used gel materials are made up of either agarose or the other one is polyacrylamide. The first one coming to the agarose, so here the structure of agarose is like this and this is a unit here we are showing a unit of the agarose and this sulfated agarose is a key element in the development of electro osmosis. The second one here in this picture you can see that is polyacrylamide and polyacrylamide is a derivative of both acrylamide and methylene bis acrylamide. Okay. Here in the presence of free radicals generated by the addition of APS we are going to form the polymer of acrylamide that is called polyacrylamide. In this entire reaction temide is going to act as a catalyst whereas APS is going to provide free radicals to carry out the reaction. So this is about the uh, support matrix which we are going to use in electrophoresis. So as we said in this uh, session we will be focusing more about separation of proteins. So let us first begin with the separation of serum proteins that is by using paper electrophoresis. The various components required to perform serum electrophoresis are like this. So one is supporting media nothing but the Batman number of filter paper, the other one is electrophoresis apparatus, the other one is power pack and then buffer system, bromophenol blue and acetic acid and absolute alcohol. So these are the major requirements to perform the paper electrophoresis. In this picture you can see the a sketch of how to perform paper electrophoresis. So in the topmost picture you can see uh, there are a buffer system in two different tanks and in the middle we are going to have a paper. On this paper we are going to put the serum sample and the moment you allow the current to flow through this buffer system, that buffer system the electricity will again passes to the paper which will enable these proteins present in the paper get separated. Okay. In the bottom you can see uh, how the proteins after separated appear that means the fractions of serum proteins if you see here the protein fractions are like albumin and globulin like uh, globulin alpha 1, alpha 2, beta and gamma that means here what we are trying to convey is the serum which we uh, find like a colorless and uh, transparent solution when you subject for this electrophoresis you are going to identify different bands through paper electrophoresis. That means here we are going to separate the proteins which are present in the serum by using paper electrophoresis. And the instrument you can see on the rightmost corner of the slide, the instrument which appears which looks like for the paper electrophoresis. Okay. And various conditions to perform this paper electrophoresis are like this. That means you need to have 7 to 10 microliters of fresh serum and we need to provide a voltage of 180 to 200 volts and we need to carry out the procedure for 6 hours and once the electrophoresis is done we are going to dry the paper in hot air oven. So after drying we are going to stain the paper and after staining we are going to destain the paper. Finally we are able to see the separated serum proteins. Okay. Yeah. So since we are talking about separation of serum proteins, so we will be discussing the other type of electrophoresis technique which is used for the separation of serum proteins and this is nothing but the SDS space electrophoresis that is sodium dodocyl sulphate electrophoresis. And let us see the details of this technique. Here the fundamental thing which we need to remember is proteins generally available in polypeptide forms and moreover to maintain the protein structure, proteins will have various types of bonds like hydrophobic bonds and disulfide bridges and hydrogen bridges. If someone is interested in separating the proteins, they definitely need to break the bonds then only they will obtain the individual polypeptide chains. So for that purpose, SDS is mainly useful for studying the individual subunits of a protein. So as we said, this SDS is a detergent which is responsible to break the 
hydrophobic bonds and similarly in this electro SDS electrophoresis we are going to use urea also and this urea will responsible for breaking the hydrogen bonds and whereas beta mercaptoethanol is responsible to break the disulfide bridges. So all these three agents we are going to use in SDS page which will break the desired respective bonds. So before going to uh, see how this electrophoresis is going to work, let us have a brief uh, demo about the apparatus and its appearance and the structure. Yeah. So if you see here, the SDS space electrophoresis system consists of glass plates and as well as a casting tray and there is another important part that is called your electrophoretic apparatus okay and in addition to this there is one other important part that is called your buffer tank and this buffer tank is supported with the electrodes for the power supply now let us see briefly how to uh, set up the electrophoretic apparatus so as i said the there are two glass plates you can see one is a complete glass plate the other one is with a cut and we are going to join these two glass plates like this okay and after that we are going to insert this glass plate in the casting chamber gel casting chamber like this and then you can tighten the screws of this gel casting chamber so once the screws are tightened see there is a space in between the glass lights the back one and the forward ones okay now we are going to pour the gel in between the space present here okay so after pouring the gel before the gel gets solidified so this is the one which we call as comb comb plate a comb jig okay now we are going to insert this comb you can see here this is similar to that of the comb which we used to uh, have for uh, what is called as dressing your hair similarly here this comb is having different teeth of even size okay and if you insert this comb here like this you can see friends here in this casting chamber now we are going to insert the comb like this the moment you insert comb what will happen in the gel there are going to be formation of wells and these wells are responsible for loading the protein sample and in this situation you are going to keep the casting tray for few minutes so once gel get solidify what will we do we are going to remove the glass plates from this casting tray and then remove the comb and take the glass plates along with the gel okay and now you are going to place these glass plates in the electrophoretic chamber like this so this is electrophoretic chamber now we are shifting the glass lights along with the gel into the electrophoretic chamber okay so like this now the glass plates along with the gel now they have been shifted to the electrophoretic chamber okay now the you can say the final step so in this we are going to like this we are going to keep the gel along with the electrophoretic system into the buffer chamber and now we are going to fill the chamber with the buffer so once buffer is loaded we are going to close the chamber and connect to the desired electrodes that is cathode and anode 
and now the other ends of the electrode are going to be connected to the power pack so once you switch on the power the electricity will go through the gel and the proteins will separate based on the charge okay after that size so like this the factors which we have discussed already like charge size and shape they will decide the separation of the proteins present inside this gel system okay so this is how your electrophoretic apparatus looks like okay so now friends coming back to the uh, presentation part here you can see the sds page apparatus the typical apparatus is looks like this so one is the tank as i said just now so there is upper one is a buffer tank and lower one is also a buffer tank okay and in between there is a glass slide okay and here you can see there is a in the gel we are able to see here two parts one is called stacking gel the other one is called running gel so the first one is stacking gel reason being here the protein is going to stay for a while okay and settle down and after that a protein once the protein sample enters into the running gel where it is going to separate okay so and here you can see on the left side of the image you can see how the power is going to flow that is the flow of electricity so from cathode to anode the power is going to flow like this and along with this power the proteins are going to be separated based on their what is called size and charges yeah so here we are trying to explain you how the electrophoresis system the procedure involves so we have already had a demonstration about the various components and how to uh, pack the system and how to run the gel also here for a brief information the protein sample which we are going to separate need to be mixed with sample buffer and the sample buffer consists of bromophenol blue and sds and beta mercapto ethanol and along with this when you mix the protein sample with the sample buffer the protein completely gets denatures that means the aim is to uh, break the protein into individual polypeptide chains and the sds present in the protein sample that is sample buffer imparts the net negative charge to the protein and whereas the bromophenol blue acts like a tracking dye which is helpful to monitor the flow of the electricity and after this we are going to what is called run the electrophoretic system for few minutes so once the tracking dye reaches the bottom of the glass slide we are going to stop the electrophoresis okay here you can see how the uh, system of electrophoresis which is connected to the power pack can be look like so here in this image on the left side you can see a power pack and this one is the electrophoretic apparatus and the blue band here you can see is nothing but your tracking dye which is moving from top to bottom okay so once this tracking dye reaches the bottom of the glass slide you are going to stop the flow of current and remove the glass plates from this electrophoretic chamber and here on the right side you can see the pattern before electrophoresis and the pattern after electrophoresis here this first one shows there is before electrophoresis the samples are loaded into the wells and the wells which are formed by inserting the comb once you allow the current to go through this gel so you can see the other one the rightmost side part of the gel which is like proteins get now separated the individual dots indicating here the separated proteins so that's how you look like but before separation and after separation so uh, so far we have discussed about how to set the apparatus and how to run the gel now let us see how to visualize the protein present in the gel so for this purpose if you see here the proteins start migrating towards anode okay and the smaller proteins will move fast whereas the larger one will move slowly so as we said there is a, a limiting factor in this electrophoresis that is the size apart from charge size is also a limiting factor that's why smaller ones will reach the bottom earlier whereas the larger one will come later okay and then once the tracking dye reaches the bottom here you can see the tracking dye which is reaching the bottom of the gel on the right side of the picture you can see the tracking dye okay 
so once it is there then you are going to take the gel out of the glass slides and you are going to perform what is called destaining okay so through this destaining you are going to remove the unbound stain towards the gel and the destainer is nothing but 7% acetic acid so this removes the unbound stain and you can see here in the right side of the slide you can see the clear gel bands okay so in this table we are explaining you the various types of stains which are available to perform various types of visualization patterns for example if you see if you are subjecting if you are performing proteins separation of proteins then you are going to use either bromophenol blue or comasio brilliant blue or dancel chloride or aqueous aniline naphthalene then sulfonate and lismine green so these are the various stains which we are going to use to perform the what is called as detection of proteins through electrophoresis on the right side you can see the remarks also so some of the stains are like which are just to give you a visual impression whether protein is there or not and there are some more which will give you the fluorescence property also and here the second part is nucleic acids so for nucleic acids the stains are like negrosin ethidium bromide methylene blue and methylene green and lanthanum acetate so these are the various types of uh, stains which we are going to use for visualization and detection of presence or absence of the nucleic acids which are separated for example if you see the ethidium bromide so which is useful for the visual purpose of the dna and the bottom ones are like lipoproteins and polysaccharides so if you notice in this table by using electrophoresis we were able to separate all sorts of biomolecules ranging from proteins nucleic acids that is again dna and rna and then lipoproteins that means a part of protein and lipid then polysaccharides that means by using electrophoresis we can separate the charged molecules based on their electrophoretic mobility size and shape yeah so friends so far we have discussed about paper electrophoresis and as well as hds space electrophoresis now we will have a glimpse of native electrophoresis that is in but what is normal page that means the major difference between the hds page and the page is the absence of sodium dodecyl sulfate okay let us see the details of the normal page so as we said this page stands for polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis as we said it is prepared without the addition of the hds and this page is widely used to study enzymes and especially remember when you are going to use page for enzymes the reason why we are not adding hds is here hds denatures the enzymes and we may lose the activity of the enzyme that's why for separation of enzymes we will be using only native page native gels and the other point here is in this native gel electrophoresis all proteins bear the original charge so we are not going to give any additional extra charge by adding some hds some other agents but whatever the charge present on the molecules is going to be used for performing the separation the other one is here the remaining steps are similar with that of the page and hds page one more important point to be remembered here is so after separating the enzyme especially by using this page we are going to soak the gel in a solution which is consisting of the specific substrate towards that specific enzyme why because the enzyme and substrate will react and we are going to observe a colored spot on the gel which indicates the presence of enzyme in that particular region of the gel which can be further eluted and used for further studies now uh, let us have a uh, glimpse of gradient gel so here the gradient gel is the one which is having pore size continuously decreasing towards the bottom so just now we have discussed about various sorts of gels and the type of gel so here the gel which is having a pore size which is decreasing towards the bottom of the gel that is the gradient that means there is a variation in the size of the gel from top to 
bottom and this gradient is achieved by increasing the concentration of acrylamide when macromolecules tend to separate in an upper electric field initially the macromolecules move according to their electrophoretic mobility as they reach down the gel get retarded by small pore size okay friends here we want to conclude that the gradient gel here the main separation is based on the size of the molecule but not on the charge of the molecule so friends so far we have discussed about various types of electrophoresis techniques with special emphasis specifically with respect to the separation of proteins so here we have a few references few further readings if you are interested you may further refer to all these references which will help you to enhance your knowledge towards the separation of proteins through electrophoresis thank you one and all